very happy to be here. I must say that uh, um, Sir Rajiv Vasudevan's introduction was brilliant. I don't think you can give a better overview of the situation on that topic. And so I will, I will refer to it. I will go to my presentation. Can you see it? Yes. So I've been already introduced. Let us go to the next to the next slide. I'll give you an overview in this presentation on the process of of, of how we brought Ayurveda into Switzerland. Simple. Then the regulations. I, I would say the process was perhaps a political fight. Then the second phase was the regulations. The third phase is the professional training. And the fourth phase is kind of a pro progressive model that came out for us as an outcome of that whole process. And here I would like to come back to what um, Rajiv Vasudevanji said. Um, it's very true that there's a huge difference between yoga and Ayurveda. See, in Switzerland, there are three fields that are under direct, strict control of the central government which is the army, engineering, and medicine, right? So important is it, it is. Obviously, if we want to bring in a new medical system in the country, we have to go through political fights, and then we have to go through tough regulations, and they will have to be up to the standards of the country, and they will obviously result in, in openings uh, to to access to tools and infrastructure, but mainly they will end in regulation of professional training. And this is what we have been doing for the last, I mean, between 2005 and 2015, during 10 years, we have been regulating Ayurveda professional training in the country. And uh, to reply to one of the questions, which are the means? How can we bring Ayurveda to where it should come? And, um, and, which are the milestones? I would really say it's obviously professional training. Um, it's good to have partners who are ready to collaborate. I mean, like clinical institutions. It's good to have medicines on the market. But as long as you don't have people who are really properly trained, the system can't develop. Because we need a properly trained person to properly use an infrastructure and to properly prescribe medicines. So that's really... That, that is the cornerstone, it's the training. At the same time, another question of Vasu Devanji was, how can we ensure the quality? And it's the same reply. If you want to ensure quality, we need highly trained professionals. That's the only way to ensure quality. But how, because this is exactly, again, if we, if we um, have to develop, if we have to grow, from all sides, pressure is there to dilute systems, obviously. So how do we balance? And this is, again, the same reply. It's high-level professional training in authentic medicine, because this you can do. But there is, one, uh, there is one prerequisite. You can only train people on a high level, professional training, and authenticity if you have a legal frame that allows you to train people on such a level and be, have them recognized. 
who will come and go for a training program of 5,000 hours plus if the person is not recognized for the diploma in an existing system? So this is how we come back to stage one of the process, the political fight, to make, to give Ayurveda a place. And this is the next, um, the next, uh, um, how do you say, the next diapo shows that we have started the whole process in 1990 at the level of our population. Because Swiss people felt they wanted to have the freedom of choice of the medical system they are treated with. That all can be there, whoever is able to develop and meet the standards, but the patient should have the choice. And that was in a, in a time where the situation was clear. Allopathy was the global prevailing medical system and Switzerland was one of the, of the very strong places because we are the seat of, of European pharma industry. And yet the people said, we want this free choice. And about 10 years later, they started to approach the uh, government with very concrete uh, requests. And uh, the objective was to enshrine complementary and alternative medicine in the Swiss constitution. So to make it really solid. This seemed to be a total, I mean, idealistic dream that would never come true. It didn't seem possible. And I don't know how exactly it happened, but somehow many people were there, were fighting, were really um, working a lot you mainly work on an honorary basis when you do that. And hundreds of people in Switzerland, it's a lot, hundreds and thousands of people did it and we made it. So in um, 19, uh, sorry, in 2009, Switzerland has become through a popular vote, the so far first and uh, only country in the West to recognize complementary and alternative medicine in its public health system through a change in its constitution. So we had the basis laid, means the political fight was successful. Now we had the basis to go to regulations, right? So when you start regulating, the regulating, the first, obviously, I mean, once in Switzerland, you get through with, on such a political level, then you get the support of the government. And then the government guides you with experts. And they immediately guided us and said, look, first thing to do, you have to regulate your professions. Um, and they have foreseen two government diploma, federal diplomas. I mean, a, a medical doctor also gets a federal diploma. These are all on a tertiary level diplomas. And uh, three professions actually are there. One Ayurveda medicine for non-physicians, one Ay Ayurveda therapy, and another one, Ayurveda medicine for trained physicians who will use it more as a complementary system of medicine. Whereas those who have the federal diploma in Ayurveda without being a physician, they will get trained in all the fundamentals of um, conventional medicine, but they will be trained fully in Ayurveda to become a full-fledged Ayurveda practitioner. Then the second step is obviously that the government said, obviously, if we train you for this, you need to have access to your tools. Thus, Ayurveda medicine should be recognized as therapeutic products on the market and should be reimbursed. As, at the same time, I haven't written it here, but Ayurveda professionals are also reimbursed, right? By the insurance companies. That comes actually, it comes now. So once people are trained and you have medicines there, you have to develop Ayurveda practice. It's, it's public health settings, but the first step would be first, it's in private health settings, right? It starts in private health settings and then slowly evolves towards public health settings. But this is a, this is a vision. And then the last step is to develop calm units uh, for, um, for teaching and for research as uh, Vasudevan, um, uh, Rajiv Vasudevan, she said rightly, we need, of course, to give evidence we have to talk the language of the prevailing medical system. And um, for this, we need research. But we do believe that research comes only with proper practice. And proper practice comes only if you have the proper training and the proper access to medicines. Because if we want to give evidence, really, of the efficacy of Ayurveda, 
you can't you can't give that evidence if you don't have the tools the real tools and the properly trained people otherwise you will ne never live up to the real potential of ayurveda so this is this is how it is been proposed to to evolve in switzerland so we have as mentioned two ug government diploma one in ayurveda medicine with 4500 plus hours of training and one for Ayurveda therapy with 3,000 plus hours of training. And then the PG specialist title for physicians. This is foreseen by the law for complementary and alternative medicine. And for Ayurveda, it is yet to be regulated. We are currently training the first uh, um, physicians in Ayurveda medicine on a level that is good enough that they should be able to confederate and then go to the government and do the regulation to get a specialist title means these will be medical doctors with specialist title in Ayurveda. And when we look thus at that model, at that, at that uh, progressive Swiss model, we clearly see the first step is the training of high level practitioners or therapists. And for us, which is very important is authentic Ayurveda. I mean, this is my personal um, contribution in the country. I've been very active in the process in all the regulations. And that was our main concern. My, definitely, personally, my main concern is to have the highest level of authenticity. I was very aware that Switzerland in some way will create one possible model. Others might create others. It will not apply everywhere. But if we have that responsibility, then we should go for the best quality of Ayurveda. So authentic Ayurveda was a very important aspect. And um, we we really do not want to give um, uh, kind of diluted or um, packaged Ayurveda. The students should learn uh, authentic from authentic sources and they should also be connected with India and learn from where the knowledge is now. So this is very important. And on the other hand, the next step will then be um, the recognition of Ayurveda therapeutic products. Even this, you can only make a selection of these products if you have people who are enough trained to know which products they need on the market because they will decide, right? So somehow things depend always on the training first. And then of course, the next step is to develop clinical practice also in integrative medicine. Ayurveda is a very fit integrative medicine, but at the same time, we would like to be recognized at a point in time as a major discipline in the medical scenario. So that is what we have been working for. And we do believe that Ayurveda for having very high standards in the field of medicine, for um, being a global reference for quality and safety, um, for um, having uh, being actually home to leading pharmaceutical companies and for um, being a global trendsetter might have an impact and we do wish that we would have that impact. We are aware that you cannot just export a system. This is again to reply to the last and uh, last question of uh, um, Rajiv Asudevanji. Um, of course, this is the Swiss model now, but people could be inspired. But uh, my major, uh, my major um, message would be go work as far, far as you can on the political level to get uh, it recognized and then do develop professions, um, do develop training programs, because this is how it goes. Each country will find its own way how to proceed there but that would be the sequence and if we can be of any help with our experience we will be happy to do to do so thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr simon that was an extremely crisp uh, overview of your journey till date and uh, you did address a lot of the uh, points i think we have uh, about seven minutes uh, you know uh, ahead of time at this point so i would like to just pose a couple of questions to you dr simon and if my co-chair would also like to ask something he's also welcome at this point so uh, uh, firstly uh, 
you alluded to private health setting and public health setting. Could you just explain a little bit more how you saw the difference between that in Switzerland? So I don't know how it is exactly in other countries, but in Switzerland, I mean, we have private health setting. We have the very basic level of uh, primary care, which is often in individual or in collective therapy centers, right? It can be one medical clinic of one physician, or most of the time now, these people would join together in group clinics, and that would be private uh, a private setting. And then we have, of course, the private clinics. They, they are run like hospitals, and they can be rather important, but they are private, uh, even not uh, public-private. They're just private institutions. They are very costly. You need to have been well insured, and it's not, not everybody has access. And then we have the public health settings, which are all the whole hospital um, uh, sector, which is free of cost because Switzerland has a compulsory health insurance. And so, of course, it, it will politically see, we, we won the fight, but that does not mean that within the medical system, the majority of people agree with us. So where it will be very important to do a good work is to convince also people in the in the public health settings that Ayurveda can help and contribute. And probably we will have to start first working in the private sector. Got it. Thank you. Uh, now, you talked about the education training, uh, which you put a very uh, fantastic globally first framework, Dr. Simone, at uh, Sama. So between the WHO approach to, the, uh, to standardizing your Medvaidya approach and the CCIM approach to Ayurveda education. Could you draw what are the commonalities and the differences between these three approaches? So um, when you talk about Medvaidya, Medvaidya is our personal training program, which has the ambition to be a, a leading one globally for international students, um, taught only by Indian teachers, um, uh, they learn Sanskrit in writing, in reading, they work with the traditional textbooks and they have master lectures, they have masters to teach them and also modern teachers. So when we look at, if, if we look at that program, we have uh, taken the CCIM syllabus as a reference to be sure that we don't skip anything essential in our syllabus. But we don't have the same number of hours, obviously, because in Switzerland, these um, training programs are regulated for being uh, part-time programs. So what we have done, we have made up in really developing cutting edge didactic um, methodology and modern technology. And we see that it, it seems to work so that we can make up in number of hours. When we look at WHO um, directives, they, I feel they are, I mean, they are good. WHO has a tough job to get, I mean, it's, it's a collective work between Indian government and WHO, but they have to project the future vision of where Ayurveda can go because they cannot project how it is now. They have to give an, an, a vision. So now they seem to, uh, to, 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 to develop, I think in, in a very, in a good way. And um, we understand that what we do in Switzerland is um, probably the, the highest level that can now be expected from any member state according to these guidelines in WHO. And very intelligently, there are various levels below. That means anybody can step in that system. Wherever you are, you can, the WHO guidelines are there to actually um, empower people to go and to, to go and grow up until the highest level of development of Ayurveda. Uh, in the last couple of minutes we have for this particular, uh, you know, part of the program, uh, could you just say uh, when you looked at the four-step process on finally going to integrated medicine and then to uh, independent system of uh, discipline, right? That vision that you see where Ayurveda medicines, I just want to clarify, are they imported as medicines to Switzerland right now? Um, this is in process of being seen. This is very long formalities. Uh, yeah. Like three years ago, we have, uh, or four years back, a list of uh, 240 
plans have been uh, uh, submitted to the government or to the to the Swiss FDA, if you want, Swiss Swiss Medic, and the, this is now in process of getting integrated into an official list, which from there on will be considered as medical plans, right? Whenever they are there in a formulation, this becomes also a medical formulation. And the second step will be that we will get medical traditional formula formulations recognized, and there will be also many. So uh, the minimum we set for the training of the students is that they have to know like uh, about 100 um, plants with all the details and a little bit more than these formulations, but there will be more and, and we want to bring them on the market. So to allow the practitioners to have real working tools. So uh, one tough question, by when do you see the system being practiced in public health settings as a mainstream uh, system? Some year, if you can just I must put a tell number. you that we, after, in the first, let's say five years after the popular vote, we experienced the very strong progress. When I say we, I'm not talking about Ayurveda only, but complementary alternative medicine and opening of calm units in university hospitals, everything. And then, of course, like always in history and politics, you have a, a movement in, in the other direction. So I would say over the last four years, the movement came and put some break. And now I think we have to come again back into our into our direction. And it's very difficult to say time, how, how much time it will take, because it means that people here who have never been interested in these medicines, who have practiced only conventional medicine and who have the full power, have to come to a point where they do accept and say, yes, this can be part from now on of our system. So that's a process. I do very much hope that within, we have to train the right people on that level, but that within five, years, perhaps maximum 10, we would have people start working really in also public health settings on the level um, of, of authentic Ayurveda as an integrative medicine first. And then it will take long. I mean, from there on, once we can prove that we are efficacious. Integrative medicine for me means that we work as a full-fledged medical system hand in hand with other systems. That's yes. already. And then we will have to work and prove over perhaps one decade, two, or I don't know how, how long, how effi efficient we are in acute, in, in chronic care. And then over time, perhaps people, if the mentalities, it depends on the mentalities, evolve well enough, it, one can say yes, but it's actually a full system. It's uh, just one final point. Is there a role for the Indian government to do anything in accelerating this, uh, the progress? So I thought so very much. I've been fighting for that for many, many years, trying to create an intergovernmental dialogue, creating an in international foundation. And uh, mm -hmm. I finally understood that governments have their cultural mentalities and that all this is helping. But I more and more saw that it has to come from inside. We have to be able from inside, from inside Switzerland, convince our government they will not accept it from outside. Mm-hmm. <laughs>